Assalamu alaikum and hi everyone. We are now in lecture 4, Relational Algebra Part 5. At the end of this lesson, you should be able to understand how to rename column output and understand the aggregate functions. Sometimes, we don't want to display the column name as in our database to the user. So, how can we do it? Rename the column by using row. Let's consider this data. We have employees relation. Inside this relation, we have employee ID, last name, salary, job ID, and department ID. Now, let's calculate annual salary of employees by displaying it together with ID number and last name. The relational algebra would be project employee ID, last name, salary times 12 from relation employees. If you take a look before the projection symbol, row is used to rename the column in the database. We do row ID number to replace employee ID, last name as last name, and annual salary to replace the calculation of salary times 12. We should rename our column if it's involved the calculation since we want to hide the operation that we did on our database from the user. From the result, we can see that all the columns are renamed according to what we specified in our relational algebra. Let's move on to the next part. Aggregate functions return a single result row based on groups of rows rather than on single rows. The functions that are available are maximum to find the highest value, minimum to find the lowest value, count to see the number of rows written, sum to get a total number, and average adding a group of numbers and then dividing by the count of those numbers. The relational algebra for aggregations is capital I AL from relation. AL refers to aggregate list. Now, let's consider this employee's data. We have employee ID, last name, salary, job ID and department ID. Let's find number of employees in the company. As we know, one row represents one employee. If we want to see number of employees that we have in our company, we can calculate number of rows that we have. How to calculate number of rows? We can use count function. What makes employee unique? Yes, the employee ID. Hence, we can count employee ID to see number of employees in the company. Let's do the relational algebra. We can do capital I, count employee ID from relation employees. And we rename our count to become my count. Then, this is the result that we have. We have 12 employees in our company. We have a lot of other aggregate functions such as maximum, minimum, sum and also average. It depends on what you are trying to retrieve. Let's move on to the next part. Grouping operation is used if we want to group the data according to certain attribute. The relational algebra would be Grouping attribute, capital I, aggregate list from the relation. Now, let's consider this employee's data. In this example, we would like to find number of employees for each department. What we did just now is to find number of employees in the company. But in one company, there are many departments. Each department may have multiple employees in it. Hence, how can we find number of employees according to department? First, we need to count the employee ID. But what makes department unique? Yes, the department ID. So, we can count number of employees according to employee ID by grouping them according to their department ID. First, 
we need to have the capital I here. On the left hand side of the capital I, we need to group them according to grouping attribute. The grouping attribute is department ID. Then on the right hand side, we put the aggregate list. The aggregate list here is count employee ID from the relation of employees. We rename the department ID to become department ID and count employee ID to become the count by using row. Now, let's consider this last example. We have employees data and also we have the department's data. What we would like to find now is find the department's name and number of employees for each department that has NG in its name. Let's analyze the question first. The question wants to display department's name, which coming from department's relation. Next one, the question also wants to find number of employees, which coming from employees' relation. We need to get the data from two different relations here. Sounds familiar? Yes, we need to do joint operation. Then, number of employees can be done by using aggregate function of count. We need to count the employee ID. The next one is condition. The condition here is department's name must have NG. Means, we need to use the selection operator. While, for each department name means, we need to have a grouping attribute according to department's name. Sounds good? Let's do the relational algebra. First, we need to do the capital I. On the left hand side of the capital I, we take a look at the grouping attribute. The grouping attribute here is department name. On the right hand side of the capital I, we count the employee ID. Next, we rename the department name to become debt name and the count employee ID to become count. Next, we do the selection department name like NG. That's our condition. All of this data is coming from employees joined with departments on employees.departmentid equals to departments.departmentid as the joint condition. And in the end, this is the result that you will get. If you observe here, the department name only consists of department with NG and inside purchasing, we have six employees. Inside marketing, we have only two employees. Now, we are done for all relational algebra's lesson. If you take a look, we have combined every single knowledge that we have known about relational algebra in the last example. I guess that's all for now. See you again in the next chapter. Thank you.